Hello, hello, everybody. It is 10.14 p.m. Central Time on the 3rd of February, 2021. It's Wednesday here in the United States. Hope you're doing well. This is a late night update. I'm going to try and turbo mode this and get it done as quickly as possible. Bring you up to speed on what's going on. It's been a few days since my last update. But last night... Large earthquake, 6.7 you see reported here now. It was 6.9 for a good majority of last night and today. I'm going to click on the earthquake. We'll open up the stats on this. Auto-generated depth, 10-kilometer depth. No tsunami warning issued with that, even though they have this on there. And it's actually 6.9 is where it originally came in with both agencies, the USGS and EMSC. For new viewers, really quick, let me explain. The earthquakes that are raised high off the globe are deep down into the earth. And we look for deep earthquakes and for shallower, larger earthquakes to spread up from where the deep earthquakes happen. And I'll zoom in on this deep earthquake, for instance, raised high off the globe. And you'll see there's a letter D there. That's a forecast area spot where we watch for new deep earthquakes to happen. And that's where this, of course, new deep earthquake is. Now, the deep earthquake that's raised high off the globe here, you'll notice it's surrounded by fives. Not just fives, but we have a 5.6 to 5.7 to the west. We have a 5.7 to the north. And over to the east, we have a 5.1. So it's like three different fives spread out almost equally following the plate boundary over here in the west Pacific. Let me show it to you here. There we go. So over in the West Pacific, where the red lines are, you'll see it goes down to New Zealand. We'll talk about New Zealand in a second. And you see it goes over to the West, over into Papua New Guinea, and further to the West, all the way over into Europe, for instance, and up into Japan. But we're talking about this pinnacle triangular point here, where we have a letter D right at the tip of the triangle. So deep earthquake came hammering in on the underside of the plate. The way I want you to look at this is like this. That deep earthquake a concentric wave compressed into the asthenosphere, coming up out of the magma deep down below in the mantle, going up through the asthenosphere and hammering into the underside of the more solid plate. Now that singularity or that concentric wave that goes into a singularity or a spike of the full combined force of the standing wave that's focusing in on itself. Now spreading out from that, what appears to be happening is a standing wave where waves spread out and combine, and instead of becoming chaotic and jostly, we see them become organized, and the more energy you pump into the wave system, the more amplitude or power that goes into the waves, the bigger the waves get, basically. Now, I want you to imagine the same sized earthquakes spreading out and away from that hammering action, and the spread is not happening in an even square tank in a laboratory. It's happening along the plate boundaries here in the West Pacific and everywhere around the planet. We'll talk about the rest of the planet in a second, but we have to get into this location first to understand what this is. So first, you have to understand deep earthquakes are coming in on the underside of the plate here. Going out to the West, we have two sets of 5.7s. So let's just call them, if you add it together, all the earthquakes around it equals about a 6.0s worth of energy combined total between all three sets of fives now going down to new zealand a 4.6 why does that matter because going beyond over to the west we have a five or a 5.1 they're about a half magnitude apart but the spread is going about the same distance if you stretch this out into a straight line between the 5.7 and the 5.1 and the 5.1 and the 4.6 and again, we have to go along the red line. So starting right about here, going over to the west, and starting right about here, and going down to the south, it's the same distance, and it's about the same spread. And it's, again, following the red lines of the plate boundary. Now, this gets into something that I talked about last night in chat. If you were in chat on Twitch last night, people were talking about what to watch for. And I think it was Go Eagles in Twitch chat. And I talked about this location right here, the Solomon Islands. And I pointed it out, and actually they had noticed it. The open area here, this new 5.1 has struck in the past several hours today. Last night it was open. The whole area was open. So now a new 
came rolling in. Yesterday, same sized earthquake struck over here in Indonesia and a 4.5 struck over here in the far western tip of Sumatra. Additionally, China started to move on the plate boundary and it's just east or northeast of Nepal. Let's go back a couple days. Look at that. See where the two sets of rings overlap? That's where the new 5.0 earthquake is, where the previous two earthquakes, the fours on either side. We're still swarming up where the 4.4 struck, up at the Mongolia border, or where the 7.0 struck, where the 4.4 is now. So it's not too big of a shock to see that. The new deep earthquakes over here on our other letter D, right at the tip of our arrow at the tip of Afghanistan. Going over to the west, new 4.9 two days ago, but in the last two days, let's wait for this to refresh. Well, is it going to refresh? Oh, wait for it, guys. Sorry, I have to hit refresh to get the most recent earthquakes. There we go. Okay, so in the last day, nothing. 1,500 miles across. Total seismic silence. With all this a day ago and all this out in front of it, think of this like a two-arm scale where we have a lot of energy or a lot of weight on one side and weight on another and that balance point in the middle in Iran. Show it to you on the plate boundary here, the red line again. Bunch of earthquakes over here in Europe. Bunch of earthquakes over here in the Mideast going over into Asia. And across here, nothing. We would expect that to break right in the middle. And it'll be the combined total of what's on both sides. What's the total on both sides? Five and fours on one side and five and fours on the other. And that puts a new mid-range five coming in on the plate boundary in South Iran. Now Europe, check it out. The border of Albania and Greece, mid-range four. That's on top of the other fives that struck. Oh, hold on one second. Okay, uh, sorry about that. Let me get another drink. Oh man, dude, it's starting to get cold but it got warm, went outside. Oh man, bad idea. That cold to warm thing. Oh dude, don't do it. They always say, you know, it's like a kind of like a wise tale or something, but it's actually true. It just does wonders, not wonders, bad wonders to your sinuses. If you have sinuses, if you're human, you know, okay. Anyway, uh, there are going to be some of us who are just AI and they're not going to understand what I'm talking about here. Okay, Poland got hit. Romania got hit. Deep earthquake came in at the Romania-Greece border. You don't see it here now, but it was 515 kilometers deep. So let's go ahead and check off Albania, which is the tiny country right here. And let's go ahead and check off Poland. And we'll also check off partially in Romania. But I'm going to watch still over to the east side of Europe for a new near 5.0 earthquake to come in right between where the two earthquakes overlap, which puts us into Ukraine. This is the old 1980s map, by the way. Gotta love it. Real retro. <laughs> East and West Germany is still on this map. It's awesome. Okay, so going up across Italy, we started to see an outbreak at Norcia Abruzzo. 2.6, 2.4. It's nothing huge, but we're expecting all the activity to go on over here just to your east. It's close enough that if a big earthquake strikes, you might feel it, but I'm looking on the east side of the plate boundary. Let me show it to you. East side of the plate boundary, which puts us over, again, Croatia, Bosnia. The other spot going up and around Romania and Ukraine into Poland. So Poland's been hit here. Romania's been hit here. Central Italy has been hit here. Here, and you see what's right in the middle of it all. The spot that got hit previously, it's gone completely quiet. So we would expect new activity to break out in the middle in the next few days. So let's go ahead and just issue the warning now for Croatia. Croatia back down to Bosnia. 
and the magnitude should be in the five range again. Get the warning out now. Because they might, I mean, if I'm wrong, I'll get back on and talk about it either way. So if I'm wrong and a bigger earthquake hits, I'll talk about that, try to figure out where it came in. And if I'm wrong and nothing hits, I'll be back on to beat myself up and figure out where I got it wrong. But I want to tell you now, it's a big open silent zone in the middle of Europe. And you've got a new push that's coming in. It's pretty much on your doorstep right now at Albania. Okay. Now, same sized earthquake, 5.0, well, 4.8 struck just north of the Azores on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, and we're looking for a new 5 to pop off up here, right next to Iceland, as well as new 3.0, or upper 3s, to strike in North France. So far, Switzerland started to move, but North Europe, the only activity you could say is Poland. I'm still looking in North France, right at the coast of Normandy. And then we watch out to Iceland as well, but again, 4.8, that's close enough for me, it's a 5. Now, why does that matter? Well, look, this is so weird. Let's go pull the coordinates on this. Guinea, Guinea. Now, isn't that weird because French Guiana got hit, and that's on the opposite side of the plate. Well, here, let me show it to you here. Right over here. French Guiana got hit by a significant sized earthquake over the past several days. So let's see if it's still on there. There it is. And look at the size of the earthquake. 5.6, right? When did this strike? On the 31st, three days ago. So we go out here over to the east, and this is so rare. Equator earthquakes? Here, let's go ahead and turn on our equator. So this is the equator itself. Tropic of Cancer and Capricorn on either side. And so, I mean, come on, we're within the equatorial region for both of these quakes. Within a couple days of each other, again, French Guiana over in South America hardly ever gets hit. Over here, it's normally to the north on plate boundary. Let me show it to you on the USGS map. Here's South America, and here's Guiana. So we're down here... And, uh, no, no, French Guiana, yeah. And so right there and across, there's our other earthquake in Guinea. So the question is, what's going on? That's the question. Somebody digging some kind of underground tunnel between the two? Wouldn't that be wild? Wouldn't that be wild? Got a bunch of Chinese tunnel digging <laughs> machines going from Africa over here to South America. I mean, no, I'm, I'm, I'm kidding, but... Uh, let's go ahead and pull the coordinates for the earthquake over in Africa. Like oh, I, I already just started like some kind of conspiracy already just by saying that. All right, is there anything of significance here? Never had to look at this location up before, so I have no idea. Okay, uh, are these roads of some kind? Rivers? Okay, we got some rivers in there. Kindia. Never heard of that before either, but looking here... Hold on. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Where's the butte top for this? Very interesting. Uh, let's see, where does it rise to the center? 2000. It's got to rise to the center of this mass. This looks to me like what we would see maybe elsewhere in the deserts, but without tree cover on it, of course. One of our plateaus created by ancient volcanism, not even marked by the Smithsonian, let's say. That's These all have telltale signs of that. Or at least this does. Uh, goes up to th yeah, it goes up to 3,300 feet or so, right at the center, of course. But again, this would be weathered down. Let's get a zoom in on it, see if we can see any exposed black basalt still. That might be forest fire region. Look how that's broken apart. Look at that. That is wild. 
Okay, well, that to me says ancient plate boundary breakage volcanism. Let's just make sure it's not an explosion. It's at 14.4 kilometers depth. So two earthquakes on either side of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. And let me show it to you. Everybody's heard of the Mid-Atlantic, but there's the stair step fracture zone that separates the two. You don't see the other earthquake over here, which was again three days ago. The USGS feed is not showing that. But it's almost like a yin-yang pattern where it's on either side of this. Okay? And that's the fracture in the plate that goes all the way up to Iceland in the North Pole and all the way down to the South Pole. Now let's jump all the way over across the planet in the other direction. We're going to go up to the north, up into Japan, and go right in on the coast of Honshu. Let's go pull the coordinates on this. A day and a half ago, Tokyo got hit. How about that? But now here we are. Oh, and by the way, Tokyo was warned. I think it was a 4.7, 6 or 7. We had warned for 5.0 plus up to 6. I think I was up to 5.9. So I, I think that might be an earthquake forecast miss, even though spot on it was hit location-wise. Okay, I just pulled the earthquakes out in the ocean. There's the coast of Honshu. That's the 4.5 from the USGS. No, that was from the Europeans. Coordinates from the Europeans took us out in the ocean. Coordinates from the USGS, where do they take us? Same earthquake. Wow, that's a pretty big difference. All right, Iwaki, I Iwok, Iwaki, Futaba, Miyagi, Toda. We go further up to the north, of course, but you guys all know this area course based upon the big earthquake that hit because of what's just to the north the Fukushima pre prefecture so we're one to the south and we're right on land and the previous earthquakes let's see if they're actually even still on here no I like how the USGS just ignored those earthquakes that struck in Tokyo Anyway, we're on the coast, and why does that matter? That was our warned location. Here we are. We'll go back over and show it to you. Oh, look. Is that the newest earthquake? That is the newest earthquake. It just hit. Hold on. That's weird. 4.5 hit at 3.40 UTC an hour ago. Okay. I, I Again, it's just weird that it's listed as the most recent earthquake. Up to the north. 4.9 and that's right on the east side of Kamchatka Russia we're going to go back over here take a look on the plate boundary there it is red line 5.0 or well 4.4.9 right <laughs> let's go over and open the volcanic ash advisory center shall we go see what's going on with the volcanoes Suwanizajima in South Japan Fuego in Guatemala Popocate Patal in Mexico Sabancaya in Peru Russia has Kluchevskoy going. Fuego, I'm looking for any new edit. Wow. Support. You see that? Like asking for support. I don't blame them. You guys, support Volcano Discovery. Donate to them. They're totally worth it. Do it. Raung Volcano. I'm just looking for anything in South America before we go any further. Okay, the reason I'm checking for South America, we have to jump all the way down here, the big earthquake. Now, this is the thing that you think I would be talking about at this whole update, but this is out in the middle of nowhere. But uh, it actually does matter to South America in the next seven days or less from the point of this earthquake. Now, let me explain why before you think that it doesn't relate to anything if you're a new viewer. Down here where the earthquake is, we look back up to the west-northwest, you see the USGS has nothing going across the Central Pacific. Look what we have. We have two giant arrows. One points up to the north side of South America. One points down to the south side of South America. The reason are fracture zones up to the north and down to the south. Now back across where the two arrows come together, that's where the deep earthquakes are taking place. So we're leveraging in one more time, leveraging in on the underside of the plate. 
the wave then spreads out and away and we get large earthquakes spreading out and away from where the hammer point takes place in this case where the arrows come together there's something that the usgs has missed if you look close you'll see a line of undersea mounts here going east by southeast it starts to make a crescent shape or a bend and it goes over further to the east then it makes almost like a c-like sh shape curve or a crescent shape curve don't know how to describe it up to the east northeast and it goes back up to the west by northwest following the under seamount chain going back into the hawaiian island chain that branches out and goes out to hawaii of course it further goes up to the north and connects into kamchatka so look again we have a line of undersea volcanoes that comes down branches off to hawaii continues on down bends around and back up into south america now right on the edge of that is the fracture zone to the south now why does that matter you leverage in over here on the underside it spreads up out and away across and over to this undersea mount chain obviously it's all volcanoes but look to the east do you see the east and west or northeast to southwest facing fracture zones that spread out from this crescent shape we go up to the north you'll see the same and the equidistant space of that but back over here it goes back over to the west it crosses across at the American Samoas and it goes back over to where our leverage is coming in on the underside so energy goes across spreads out and goes down to the south also up to the north this is like a train going across a bridge and there's vibration as it's going across the bridge but at the end of the bridge there's going to be an impact it's going to impact like a mountain it's going to try to go around the mountain instead of going brute force through it but you'll notice we have an arrow here in South America it says travels underneath and in the last day since the 6.7 a new five has struck back down where our seven struck last week last week a 6.9 struck right here 7.1 6.9 depending on who you go with why does that matter because this was a 6.9 this just struck three days ago and this struck last week but now it's aftershocking here of course that's still aftershocks from the seven so that means there's a tremendous amount of energy trapped between the 6.7 the 5.0 and we go back to the USGS map and look where it goes it goes up to the north and connects into Central America of all things so the energy is now trapped in this system between the 5 the 6.9 out here and up to the north into Central America bordering on the coast of Mexico all the way south of Baja California or the Gulf of California in other words we have to watch on both sides now for a compensation to take place I'm gonna look at the halfway point between the big earthquake out here in the ocean out in the Pacific and the other big earthquake from last week down here at the tip of Antarctica if we go up and around the bend of the plate we look in the middle and that's one of the most famous earthquake zones on the planet South Chile now the other spot we have to watch is all the way on the north side and we look between our sets of earthquakes so this means Colombia Panama Ecuador right here where the big open area is and there are no earthquakes let's go back to the map here look where all the plate boundaries come together so this is the train coming across the bridge the bridge is vibrating as it's coming across but when it impacts into South America it should be enough to displace pretty much the whole continent and then those adjacent to it we'll get into in a second so Mexico United States but this is a big one as a matter of fact this is the biggest one I've ever seen come across now you might wonder again why didn't I get into this first well first I had to explain how the deep earthquakes come up how it spreads over to Europe and goes all the way out that way I had to explain how it goes up to Japan 
because all three of these things happen about the same time, but it seems that this one happens second to last. So while they do technically all happen around the same time, we usually see it go over to Europe first, then we usually see it go up to Japan around the same time, and then it spreads across. And the spreading across takes a day, maybe two, and so this is going across now, last night, and it's saturated the whole continent. So we watch between. Now, how big would we watch? Well, if this is the train coming across and something big could hit at the end where it's going to impact into the mountain, and this is the biggest I've ever seen, I would warn for one magnitude larger down to the south and about the same size up to the north. So down to the south, like a 7.7 .7 or an upper 7 striking here in Chile. And up to the north, an upper 6, just like the size that's out here now. So it's going to try to spread up to the north, break up to the north. I would think about the same size. Down to the south, though, this is where it's coming across. And I really have to warn after that for 6.0 range activity all the way down here at the tail end where the letter X is at the tip of the South Sandwich Islands. The travels underneath point. In addition to all of this, volcanoes. Volcanoes. Look, I mean, we can pretty much expect it all the way across Central America and South America in the next few days. Now that a big push is coming across, that's going to create tension. Tension on the plate boundaries. Let me show those to you again. The red lines. And then next to the plate boundaries, we have magma chambers nestled into the crust. So what do you think is going to happen when you put a lot of tension and force into the red line and it starts compressing? Well, it's going to go into the magma chambers. We're going to start to see an increase in the number of eruptions and maybe even see some new volcanic blasts at volcanoes we haven't heard from in a long time. Now, I do not forecast eruptions, but I have to take them into account. So I'm just going to warn for that now. Up to the north. Central America. Look at the plate boundaries again where the red lines are. And let's get back to the earthquakes. Same sized earthquake, 4.9. Make note of that, by the way. How in the Gulf of California, it's 4.9. Then we get down here and we have a 4.7 with threes in between. Well, actually, in a 4.2 in between. Now look down here a 4.9 and a 4.4 and a 4.7. It's the same size, but it's spreading out again across South America and Central America. And it's following the red lines of the plate boundary. So it's an equal spread already going on and right in the middle of it. Silent. Over to the east, a new four struck right next to Dominican Republic. Actually, I think it's on land. Hold on. No, it's so close within 50 miles definitely felt across the eastern tip of the island. And that, too, is on the plate boundary over to the east. So, four point something striking in Dominican Republic, right next to Puerto Rico. And you trace it back over to Guatemala, where we have a 4.9. Or, I'm sorry, a 4.4 and a 4.7. Pretty interesting, right? It's the same size. Again, we're spreading out across the plate boundary, so I would watch between these two now. Cayman Island. Again, maybe just east, Jamaica. Between Cayman Island and Jamaica, I'd watch. And magnitude-wise, let's see. Popocatépetl is erupting. So is Fuego, plus the 4.7. Let's warn for upper 4, 4.9 to 5.0. Let me show you where. Here, right on the stair-step boundary of the plate boundary. So, Cayman Islands, here on the north side. Jamaica, here on the southeast side. And let me get a sip of my drink here. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, man. Whew. You can just hear the dryness of my throat being parched. It's like the best feeling. Ah, just clean water, guys. Just clean water. That's all we're drinking. Okay, now, United States. How about Hawaii? Man, oh man, I got so many messages and I told everybody, I'm not saying a word. <laughs> Here I am now, right? Let's get into it. A new four 
struck over on the east side of the big island. Fern Forest. Oh, isn't that just the most pleasant sounding name? I bet it's awesome. I bet there really is a fern forest there. Let's go put the coordinates in and go see. Out to Hawaii. Aloha. Wait, I I feel like I've been lied to. I feel... I, well, Dodge, there was a fern forest at some point here. Do you see this little patch of, of trees here? There's a fern forest down in there. The rest of it's a giant black lava flow for 20 miles all the way around. It's going back up to Pu'u'o'o Volcano. And Pu'u'o'o is really just on the side of the Middle East Rift Zone. Now, let's go put the coordinates in again and just take a quick gander. A new four over at Pu'u'o'o. After Kilauea starts to increase in pressure, after new swarms and outbreaks and some pretty weird activity going on over here at Mauna Loa and new earthquake activity up here at Mauna Kea even. So, earthquake activity at Mauna Kea, earthquake activity at Mauna Loa, new eruption and earthquake activity, of course, at Kilauea, now a new four at Pu'u'o'o, the Middle East Rift Zone. Still recharging. Lava Lake is still filling. And as it recharges, well, first of all, what's recharging it? Magma. But why? How about all the deep earthquakes going on around the rest of the planet? How about the flurry of 7.0 earthquakes this past week? And sixes now. Upper sixes. We had a 6.9 again last night. But multiple sevens in a week? Multiple new deep earthquakes? Tension traveling across the Pacific plate? Tension going through the plate? And look where Hawaii resides. See these east and west facing fracture zones I told you about, right? You see where they go. Goes back across the Hawaiian Island chain. Connects into our crescent shape of undersea mounts. Goes up to Kamchatka, where there's seismic activity and eruptions taking place. And it bends all the way back down in here. And it goes right into the other earthquake. Quite literally, right into it. And there's an eruption where the letter V is there at Sabankaya. So like bookends, Sabankaya Volcano and the earthquake in South America... We go around the C-shape bend of the undersea mount chain, and we go back up to another earthquake about the same size, right next to another volcano about the same size. Hawaii, you're right in the middle of it. So that's what's causing the increase. And the last time Hawaii erupted in 2018, and then it collapsed, you remember this? It was when all the deep earthquakes were taking place. Same within 2014 and 2015 when it happened the last time. So, we've seen it happen before. New deep earthquakes are taking place now. New seismic activity is happening over on the side of Pu'u'o'o over here. And the Middle East Rift Zone is down below this whole thing. I would think a four up at Mauna Loa, a four back at Mount Mauna Kea, and a four down at Kilauea. Those three already happened. Now we have a new four over here at Pu'u'o'o, and this is all in the past few weeks. And in the middle of it all, the big eruption. I would think maybe the only thing missing now is some kind of new fissure to form between Pu'u'o'o and Kilauea. As this thing's refilling, it's probably going to find a weak point up in between the two. Wouldn't you think? I mean, what do you think the 4.0 level activity in the magma chamber tied to Pu'u'o'o means. It means seismic, but more than seismic, I told you this last time, I'm not going to be paying attention to the tilt meters or the sulfur dioxide levels because they didn't show us jack squat before the last eruption just a few weeks ago. So now I'm just paying attention to the seismic. And if I see a new four pop off over at Pu'u'o'o, I certainly have to start watching Pu'u'o'o and around it. And again, this thing erupted several times. 2011, 2014, 2015. It's really significant. Again, this thing is very, very interesting. But we could see something break out right here on the side of the lava flows. There's been many fissures in the past that formed throughout here. So a crack in the ground that forms and maybe a 
spatter cone kicks up for a few days or a few weeks, that could happen. Seismic is a sign. It's a sign of increasing pressure inside of the magma chambers at the volcano. Let's back it out again and show it to you from a side profile. Now, I'm not saying it's going to erupt. I'm just saying I'm watching it now, and I think you should too. So looking up at the big island one more time, Kilauea is where the little red triangle is right in the middle of the screen. Mauna Loa looming in the background. Really, Kilauea is at the foot of Mauna Loa. And you could say Pu'u'o'o is kind of on the side or flank of Kilauea. Now, the only other seismic activity worth talking about in Hawaii has been happening around the rest of the big island. So, is that worth mentioning? Yes. The other earthquakes, look where they are. They're basically going halfway across, or right across the middle of the whole island, from one side to the other. And the magnitudes are about the same. One side 2.4, the other side 2.2, nestled in between, all ones and twos, like books stacked in between. But look where the cluster is. The cluster is up at Mauna Loa, all around it. So wait, we have a four over on one side of Kilauea, and we have a cluster of earthquakes quite literally going all around the side of Mauna Loa. Let's look at it again from a side view this way. Okay, so now we got the island turned on its side, but a bunch of earthquakes around here, and a bunch of earthquakes down here, and this is the spot that just rose in blue. What do you think's happening? Recharging. It's still filling. It's still recharging. It's spreading out to the other volcanoes nearby because this one, well, this one is either can't handle it or maybe it's just such a great push that it's coming into all of the magma chambers in the area around the Middle East Rift Zone and it's spreading over to Mauna Loa and it's spreading down to Pu'u'u'u'u'u but it's still centered at Kilauea and it just means there's going to be some more outflow inside of the crater itself maybe i mean again these are guesses on my part but i mean look at it it's again it's going across half the island that would mean half the island the magma chambers down below mauna loa mauna kea or i'm sorry mauna loa kilauea and pu'u'u'u'u are all three tied together which i think we've already know that right so the only other spot i haven't mentioned is down along the coast and that's at the south central tip of the island i'll show you what's there it's right at the flank of Loihi. So again, if we were to look at this sideways, I'm not going to bother doing that, but Loihi is out here in the ocean, and it comes right up to land here, and all of the earthquakes are happening eh, pretty much right in here. And I would say that's on the flank of Loihi, even though this is down below this. This is rising. Loihi is rising. Okay, so does that explain it? A line of earthquakes going across the big island? It's all tied to the Middle East Rift Zone. We have to now watch over at Pu'u'u'u. We have to watch over at Mauna Loa for some kind of volcanic activity potential. Look, if it's swelling in the middle and it's weak on either side, it could break on either side. I'm watching for it. Keep watch. Something like this, let's hope it just goes away. It could just go away. The deep earthquakes could stop in the next several days. The pressure could decrease in the plate, could transfer out of the area. It could break and release with a new fault or a new earthquake, and then no eruption happens. Okay, let's carry on. Alaska. Alaska. So last week, uh, I was off by a half magnitude. It was a 4.8 that came in, and I was off by about 150 miles. So we had warned Anchorage, and it came in right in on the other side of this peninsula right here. But look what's happened since. Man, you want to talk about a spread of earthquakes. This is just 48 hours, guys. So coming in from the south along Kodiak, going up across basically the whole basin, leading up to the mountain range where Mount Denali is, the highest point in North America, and then focusing in like a pinnacle point just north of it. You'll see nothing to the north. But wait, let's go over and look on good old Google Earth. Show you what's there. There we go. You see all the volcanoes. You see we go up to Mount Denali here. But just north of Mount Denali, the earthquakes kind of putter out right in this area beyond the highest point in North America. 
And look what's there, Jumbo Dome and Buzzard Creek. Two marked volcanoes, one of the only sets of marked volcanoes from recent era, from the Holocene. But going back down here to the plate boundary map, USGS red line map again, look. The thick red line goes up and makes a bend down into North America. And then contouring that on the interior of the plate on the Craytown edge. We have a series of earthquakes that go into the edge of the plate. So what's causing that? A push coming in from here, going across, up, and into the plate. So far, it's on a 5.0 basis. But something's coming in now. You can see it. Something's displacing half of Alaska on a 2.0 basis, all the way up to Mount McKinley and beyond to Jumbo Dome and Buzzard Creek. Again, just a trickle out beyond that. So it's all focused in right here. I would look in the middle of it all. So let's back it out and take a look. Find that rough center of this whole hot mess. Comes in just south of Anchorage, but Anchorage is pretty much right here. So I would have to warn just south of Anchorage down to the coast. And magnitude-wise, we would put it in the 5 range. 5.1, 5.2. If I'm wrong and it comes right into downtown Anchorage, I'm trying to get it down to a 200-mile stretch, guys. So get ready for that. Okay, here we go. Everybody, wake up. Wake up. You in the back. Okay, what, what, what is that? What are you smoking? Get out of there. I'm calling your parents. That's it, you California people. Gee, Zoomers. Get out of here, kid. All right. There we go. All right. Now, again, look at the Craytown. <laughs> you all with me now? Wake up. Wake up. Somebody's got their earphones on. Somebody's got their earphones on. They got lulled into a sense of sleep, and then I just totally knocked them out of their chair. Look at the earthquakes and compare them to this, the Craytown Edge. Now you're going to notice a few things. A new outbreak is taking place right here at the Western Virginia border region. One more time, Craytown Edge, look at it. The rusty brownish color over on the east coast of the United States. Compared to the earthquakes, it's a perfect match. Not only that, three days ago in my last update, this is the spot I adjusted the warning to right down to the spot. Now, I'm not bragging, but I just have to tell you, we had adjusted the warning area based upon the previous earthquakes that struck up in New York. And I said, now that New York has been hit, let me show some of those to you. The new halfway point is here in Western Virginia. And now Western Virginia has been hit by a little outbreak. I call it maybe not a swarm, but an outbreak of earthquakes has taken place there. Going back to the West, we're at the bend of the Craton Edge down through Georgia. We go down across the south. We go back into the New Madrid Seismic Zone. We go further back to the west and look at this. A major increase in the number of earthquakes across Oklahoma. And we go right up into Kansas where two days ago, look at that. Oh wait, where is it? The Europeans reported it? <laughs> oh no, wait. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, I stand corrected. It was actually on the Oklahoma side of the border. We went up to 3.6. So we were looking forward to go back up to 4. But right now, you can see it. Whole cluster of earthquakes going right up to the tip of the red arrow. And I want to go pull the coordinates on the cluster. This is a swarm. Anything over 10 earthquakes. Quinton, Oklahoma. I have a good inkling. I know what's there. Let's go look, shall we? Wow, we got hot spots nearby, but look what we have in the woods right here. So you see all these little cutout spots in the woods. Well, let me zoom in and find an example. There we go. Okay, we're going to find a tank, a pump, a jack, and a pipeline. Let's see if we can find the jack. And, or, well, we found the pump and the pipeline. Uh, all of these, every single little pad here has a tank, a pump, a jack, and a pipeline fracking oil and gas and we go up here right next to Quinton and there's one right at the earthquake epicenter 
oh, you can even see the shadow of the oil well or the jack or the pump right here. So again, drill points. Drill points getting hit. Now we have hot spots around this area which are being detected by satellite. And let's go see, oh, they're along the power lines and railroads again. We're seeing that happen, but look how many drill points are right here. Look at all of them. Every single one of those starts to look like ants on the ground, doesn't it? Okay, back up here across western Oklahoma, same thing going on. And again, look, it goes up to 3.0 today. So it's all at drill points. And again, just in Oklahoma here, drill points. Once we get over to the east, this is New Madrid Seismic Zone, the folder, the bend, and the plate. And over further to the east, we're strictly on the edge of the Craton. I did not look up the earthquake over in Virginia. Let's go do that because there could be something significant there. The only way to know. Sparta! Surface earthquake. This is Sparta! Okay, all right. I could crack so many Leonidas' jokes. I made one. I made this great Leonidas joke because you know all their uh, animation in that movie where like they put the six-pack on the guys and stuff? Well, they have a scene where he's standing there in the moonlight. I said, is that animated too? All the ladies are going to know what I'm talking about. All right. So wait, we're right next to a series of high-voltage power lines again. And I say again because there's just it happens too many times where we have the giant tower lines. These aren't the kind that go to your house. These are the giant transmission lines, and we're right next to it again. How do you like that? And it's at the surface. Okay. Texas. Do I need to show these to you? The earthquakes in Texas are also at drill points. Midland, Texas. We all know about that. If you don't know about the Texas drill points, I don't even know what to tell you. There's millions of them across Texas. Tens of millions. Some of the oil pumping now is bigger than the Saudi Arabian pumping operations, believe it or not. And I can show it to you. There, No question it. So, for instance, right here kind of looks rough in the ground, but you zoom in and you'll start to see the different pads of the different producing oil wells. Here's the pipeline substation where they're going to condense the gas or oil and put it into a pipeline. And every one of these little square pads, again, it goes on for miles, is a different well. But then you get into stuff like this, where it's just done for whole counties this way, and that's sparse. Right here, that looks like a lot, right? Every one of those is a well, and that's sparse because look. Look what they get into. Every one of these. And there, it's not just one. Oh, wow, isn't that? Look at that. That's grand. That's grand right there. That's how we do it here in the States, guys. Okay, anyway, uh, it's whole counties down this way. Look, do you see how many there are? These aren't houses. Everyone's an oil well. Just rando zoom in on one. I'm not against oil and gas, but when you start doing this many drill points, oh, look, we have hot spots there. Probably flaring those off. They have flare apparatus on many of those. You have millions of drill points, and they're on the edge of the craton. The craton becomes weakened. And as energy is going across the plate, guess what? It seeks out the drill points. So, drill points, Texas here. Drill points, Texas here. Drill points, Texas here. Drill points, Oklahoma here, here, and here. All that drill points. Weakness on the edge of the craton due to man-made drilling. Once we get to the west and northwest, we get into a more complex situation where we have drill points from man that exist at oil and gas wells, also geothermal drill points, as well as Mother Nature punch points like volcanoes. So let's go over into Utah and show you an example of both man-made punch points and Mother Nature punch points. We'll pull this 2.0 down here in southwest Utah to show you an example of a Mother Nature punch point. Come along with me on a voyage of discovery. And we're gonna learn something together. First of all, we're gonna learn what's exactly at this location. Wow, we got a lot of hotspots. Hold on, guys, hold on. 
Uh, what do we have going? Okay, we're at Cooper Knoll, which is really just part of the Markagunt Plateau. The Markagunt Plateau is huge. We have an earthquake there, but I'm more interested in the new hotspots that are here that are being filtered out by the computer because it doesn't know how to read what's going on there. Can't make sense of that. Look, the only spots that have hotspots in the entire area are right next to where the earthquake is taking place. So the satellite's detecting something coming from this volcanic field in the middle of winter where it just got done snowing down there. And it's up in the mountains. This is up at... 9,600 feet altitude. This one at 9,500 feet altitude. Come on. After it snowed, hot spots on the side of a volcanic field. You tell me what you think it is. Because your guess is probably as good as mine because we'd both be guessing. But I would say if it's on the side of a volcanic field, it just got done snowing there. We have an earthquake that strikes there within the same day as these hot spots appear in there. We don't normally see either happen there. Okay, there you go. Related. That's what I would think. Science. Occam's razor. Now, what about up to the north? See these? 1.4, 0 0.9. I could pull either earthquake and it's going to take us in right on the edge of a giant pumping operation for oil and gas again. And I mean giant. It's almost as big as one of those Texas pumping operations. Where do you see it? So we go from a Mother Nature punch point, volcanic field. And we go up here and it looks pretty. Oh wait, look what we have right here. High voltage power lines going through the area. Right next to where the earthquake is. Uh oh. Well man, that kind of... Do, you, do we even need to look up the pumping operations? Here are the pumping operations right over here. Hopefully you can see the shadow of the jack of the pump. So the pumping operations are right there, but man, we've got the high voltage power lines there again. And people ask me, how can an earthquake be caused by high voltage? Uh, I would say electromagnetically. Maybe a, a, you know a vein of iron ore in the ground that could some. I, I again, this is all new stuff. These are things that I'm finding as I'm looking along. What's the relation? I don't know. Let me get into my PhD. Go seek a bunch of financing from the government. Do 20 years of study and get an answer. Or maybe we could put, leave that up to other people. All I know is that there's earthquake striking there and I think there's a relation. Well, not just think. There's enough of them that it's getting weird. That there's got to be a relation. Okay, now, up to the north, we get up into Salt Lake City. Let's go pull the coordinates on this. Magna, Utah. M-A-G-N-A, -A, Magna. And put the coordinates in. Look what's here. What do you see? See all these? Thiokol. Underground bunkers. ATK orbital systems now is what it's called. We're right next to the BP mining facility where they do a bunch of deep mining here. And they lay it out on these conveyor belts that are covered by these. Obviously covered by roofs to protect whatever ore they're bringing out of there. But... Yeah. Underground bunkers. There, where the earthquakes are happening. Now, up to the north, 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 0 0.3, we're on the Wasatch Fault. So we go out of the fault, we go down to the bunkers. We go from the bunkers down to the drill points, or the power lines. And then we go from the power lines and drill points down to Volcano. That's got a hot spot on it right now. Now that reminds me, I saw a cluster of hotspots as we were zooming in that just looked to me like it was outrageously big for some reason. Let's go see what's up with that. Where were, where was that? Wow. Arizona. Guys, hold on. Look at this. Guys, hold on. We've got a massive outbreak of hot spots in the desert on the east side of the San Francisco volcanic field going over to the ancient Indian Wells Volcanic Center. And look at the topography here. Let me zoom in and show you. Look, we're, we're talking about sand. Sand. Let's try and get a street level view on a nearby area. Yeah, here we go. Well, here, this is pretty close. 
Let's take a look. How forested is it to be creating this kind of heat signature? What the heck? Do you see this? Do you see this? Do you see this? It just froze and it won't let me do anything. What the hell? Yeah, yeah. We're going to have huge fires out here, guys. Look, there's one tree and a microwave tower. That, don't, that won't help anything. One tree. One. There's one tree. As far as the eye can see. And they planted it next to that house. So, across the open, barren deserts in the winter time, all of a sudden, we have at an ancient volcanic field a massive outbreak of hotspots going all the way up to the San Francisco. Oh my God! Oh my God! This is right where the steam appeared several years ago. These hotspots being measured right now by the satellite. This is the San Francisco volcanic field. And inside of the San Francisco volcanic field, is something called Sunset Crater right here. And several years ago, I was watching n morning satellite feeds from GOES, the G-O-E-S satellite system. And I saw this steam plume coming from the east side of the San Francisco volcanic field. So let's go look at San, let's see, Arizona, Let's see if that brings it up. There it is. Here it is, 2015. Six years ago. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna full screen this. And maybe I need to do we have HD? We do have HD. Okay. So let me pause it. There we go. Okay, now right here at the center of the screen, right here, you're going to see this steamy vapor coming off the east side of the San Francisco volcanic field. Now, they tried to say the mainstream media came out and the National Park Service addressed my video. The mainstream media and the National Park Service picked up my video and tried to say that this steam in the morning that vaporizes off and goes away that that steam was from a control burn down here and that it wasn't steam and it was smoke from a control burn down here southwest of Flagstaff they tried to say this was smoke from a control burn somewhere else basically now that's the east this brown splotch is the east side of the San Francisco volcanic field over here And that was 2015. They wrote all kinds of hogwash stories about it. It was really, really, honestly, they, they, they roasted me back in 2015 for noticing this. You know what they said? They said, we had rangers out that morning and they didn't see anything. Nothing happened. I said, why did you have rangers out there that morning? On the east side of the San Francisco volcanic field, there aren't even any roads. Why did you have anybody out there even inspecting in the first place? No answer. Right? And if the Rangers don't see it, it didn't happen. I mean, oh, and meanwhile, they, their explanation on the, on the satellite system, they said the satellite system was an old, grainy satellite. It's GOES! Anyway, you can see we're going across the desert and we're going out to the Lathrop, Indian Wells Volcanic Center and Lathrop Cones. But this, look at it. These are remnant tuftages of ancient volcanoes from an extremely long time ago. To get any hot spots of any kind out here at all, I want to do more street level and see what it looks like down here. Yeah, again, look at that. Certainly not enough to burn to show up for a long period of time over hundreds and hundreds of square miles. Do you know how many square miles that is? Look at that. That's across half the state of Arizona. It is. It really is almost. It's oh no, one quarter of the state going over right across the center, one quarter of the state. So there's no way that it's not like it's going to be a control burn. There's not like there's going to be some people out there having a party. It's over 
Well, here, let's get a, a mile measurement on that so we can be specific. And it starts at the volcanoes and goes down to the volcanoes. Basically starts right here and goes down to here. That is 89.9 miles. Let's just say 89 miles. 89 miles long. And width, the width on that is what? What do you think? 10 miles? 20 miles. 20 miles wide, 80 miles long, going from San Francisco Volcanic Field down to the ancient Indian Wells Volcanic Center. Basically, this is an older version of this. And San Francisco Volcanic Field, let me show it to you. Again, look how many cones are in the center of this. To justify how there could be hot spots coming up here, the plate could be releasing heat. Look how many different spatter cones there are just across this volcanic field. These didn't all happen at once. They happen over a long period of time. And there's going to be future ones in the future. This is not extinct. It is not dormant. It will erupt at some point in the next few thousand years. Guaranteed. 100%. And it's happened that way so many times in the past. Anybody who says otherwise is just incorrect or trying to downplay things. So people come here to do tourist money and that kind of stuff. But there's nothing to be alarmed about. I mean, we'll know if anything's going on and it's out in the desert anyway. So it's not like there's a lot of people there. But the amount of hot spots there, there's no electrical lines. Going down in New Mexico, you well, we could talk about this all day long. Look across the south. See all these red dots? Every one of these red dots is a new detected hotspot today. Many of them are happening directly at power lines and railroad stations or railroad lines. Here's another example of the power lines. Do you see how there's a set of power lines here? And how there's a set of power lines over here? And they're the big kind. Do you see how they overlap? Okay. And we go all the way across the south. You find this everywhere here. Up here by my house. One county west of my house. I'm right here. See Marthasville? That's me. Here's a hot spot. Where are we going the hot spot? We're right at a set of high voltage power lines again. No exaggeration. So the high volt, and, and, and they go down here to the south and connect into a bigger set where they overlap. Here and here. So we're right next to the high voltage power lines again. That's in Missouri. We can go down to the south. We have more. The computer is detecting this and it doesn't know what to make of it. So it's filtering it out, quote unquote. But some kind of piezoelectric discharge. Or it could be coming up out of the plate and that the power lines there are attracting it up out of the plate. It's not coming out of the power lines that the power lines being there are attracting the earthquake to it. Could be that too. Why am I taking the time to show this all to you? Let's recap. A line of earthquakes going across the edge of the craton. Going down through Texas, back up to Oklahoma. Texas and Oklahoma, all drill points. Once we get over to the east, we go over to Sparta. We're at a power line. But that's on the edge of the craton. What do you want to bet we're at power lines back across down in here into Tennessee? I'm not going to take the time to look it up. Just go look it up. You tell me in the next update whether or not I was right or wrong about that guess. But we go back across over here. And then once we get over into Utah, we're at drill points, volcanoes, and power lines. We're at underground bunkers going up to the Wasatch Fall. One thing they all have in common. The drill points, the volcanoes, the power lines, the hotspots. The volcanoes, they, okay, they all have a tie together in their weak points in the crust where Mother Nature releases at when the plate is compressed. And the plate is being compressed from the northwest. Let's get into the northwest now. You ready? A line of earthquakes, tremendous line of earthquakes coming out of Montana, going right down into the park at Yellowstone. Compared to where we were three to four days ago, we had like two, two earthquakes across here. Now look at it. Last 48 hours, 72 hours really shows it. The number of earthquakes has picked up. And it's going across the edge of the Craton. Look at Montana. Look at Yellowstone. Over Idaho, we're over the magma chamber for Yellowstone that goes into Wyoming. So the magma chamber for Yellowstone, while it goes up to the surface at Wyoming, goes back below over here. And we got a 3 point, what was it? 3.2? Hold on. Let's see. You know what? I probably should close a few windows. That just gives more opportunity for everybody to come stepping in. 
Okay, so yeah, we're back over here. We're dealing with 3.2. Or no, 3.0 and a 3.2. It matters to me to know because back up here, we're shifting in Washington, Oregon, Vancouver Island, Northern California, not with earthquakes, with tremors. Let me show you the USGS tremor map. Well, PNSN USGS tremor map. And all these little red dots signify small vibrations as the plate is shifting. Some days we only have 5, 10. Some days they don't even report any. But in this case, we have 743 as of today. Look where they are. Halfway across Vancouver Island, down to the south, down next to Victoria. Then a cluster at the south tip of the Puget Sound. Another cluster right at the Washington-Oregon border. Another cluster between Portland and Salem, Oregon. And another cluster down at the California-Oregon border. Make note of that. And let's go and look at the USGS plate boundary map. So wait. We're shifting here. We're shifting here. We're shifting here. We're shifting here. What do all those points have in common? Look out in the ocean. Do you see it? They're like arrows pointing into each spot that's shifting. Now I can turn on the map out in the ocean so you can kind of see this a little bit better. So on land, we are shifting. And it's corresponding to the bends in the plate out in the ocean, which is the Juan de Fuca fracture zone. Now this is just for today, the tremors. Let's go back a day to the second. 701. Look at the distribution again, and you know what, I'll turn the other map back on, the topographic map. Look at the distribution on this. Northern California in the valley, also a cluster in central Oregon, northern Oregon between Salem and Portland again, then in southwest Washington, and we go up in northwest Washington, right at the tip of the Olympic Peninsula and in the Strait of Juan de Fuca. This is yesterday. Let's go back another day before that. Let's go back to the first. 479, all centered up in Vancouver Island. Let's go back even another day to the 31st. As a matter of fact, let's just keep going back. Let's go back like six or seven days. There we go. So going back to like the 24th, we're in California, Southwest Oregon, with just a little cluster up to the north, right? Then all those earthquakes struck down in California. That was, again, almost a week ago. 25th, look what happens. Starts to center out. Right? The big clusters that were down in California. The big cluster that was up to the north. Then it focuses in on the north. And that's the 26th. Now watch. 27th. Boom. North starts to spread. The other spots down to the south also start to correspond. This is all as the plate is shifting. The Juan de Fuca out in the ocean. The red lines pointing into the spots that are shifting. Remember that. This is the 27th. Here's the 28th. Again, focuses in on Vancouver Island, and down to the south starts to pick up. You remember what happened on the 28th. The other new line of earthquakes came down into California. Go forward to the 29th. Boom, up to the north. 30th should stay up to the north. Little cluster to the south, but you see where the big cluster is to the north. 31st, cluster to the north. Cluster to the south starts to get bigger. First, up north only. This is two days ago. Second, up north pretty much only, and it spread to the south equally spaced almost. And to the third, there it is. So why do we take the time to look at all these? This is as the plate is shifting. It's focused in on the north. It's focused in on the south. The spreads are happening in between, but not much in comparison to the north and south tips. Again, California and up to the north at Vancouver Island is where the bulk of all this has been taking place. We go back over and look at the area here, north part of the Juan de Fuca fracture zone, south part of the Juan de Fuca fracture zone. The middle is shifting or compensating or teetering and tottering in between. Now the break is going to happen. It is going to happen. Now the break is going to happen most likely on land, I think, over to the east. So we should watch over to the east by Yellowstone. Should be into the five-ish range. Let's put it Yellowstone to Idaho, 5.0 next few days. Additionally, out in the ocean, this is where we get a little troubling because sometimes they don't report the earthquakes out here. Yeah. But, no, seriously, sometimes they do not report the earthquakes out here. 
and we would look for the same size, a 5-ish, to strike on both sides. I hope I got the magnitudes right. Now down to the south and southwest, into Oregon, you see we have a few earthquakes reported, one at Newberry Crater Volcano right in the middle of Oregon, but I'm interested in these two. What's up with this? A 1.1, 1 .1, oh, an explosion. Look, you'd think I'd be more interested in the earthquake at the volcano, but I have to look up the earthquakes here because they list so many explosions. What's up with everybody blowing stuff up over in Oregon, huh? Huh? The previous hotspots from back in June, but what's up with everybody blowing stuff up here? Where's the quarry? We got some backcountry mountain road. It must be Bubba out there with Tanneride again. I, I, again, I don't know what to make of it. Forestry, service roads, nothing here of any significance. The plate is shit. Oh, wait. Did I say nothing here of any significance? How about the only set of high voltage power lines? And it's one, two, three, four tower sets worth. <laughs> oh, boy. Hold on. Okay, so that's an explosion, right? Yeah, right. Now, let's go look up the 1.0. Coburg, Oregon. What's at the... Or it's a 1.1. So we've got two of the same-sized earthquakes. One's at a power line. The other's not. Uh, no, look where the other earthquake's bringing us in. Right below the power line. Literally. There's the power lines. There's the towers, right? There's the earthquake. It literally is below the power line. Power line goes right across this field, right across the street. That is the chances of both of them. One's an earthquake, the other's an explosion. <laughs> um. All right, now let's go over and look at three rivers and go in the middle of Newberry Crater just to show everybody what a volcano looks like again. As if you don't know. But this one's pretty interesting looking. In Central Oregon, Newberry Crater, it's got glass flows, a type of lava. I think that's what it is. And you see it comes down and it spreads out and goes onto both sides of the lake where it previously flowed out. And the actual crater is at the center here. Go down inside of it, look at the side of it. But And on the other side, another flow broke out and went down into the crater itself. So recapping, Newberry Crater, Volcano, Power Line, Explosion, and Power Line, Earthquake. Over to the east, earthquakes above the magma chamber for Yellowstone going across the Craton Edge down into Yellowstone Park. We're going to look for a new 5 to pop off here in the Pacific Northwest, well actually Idaho, then a new 5 also to pop off out in the ocean. And that should be at our middle point between our sets of earthquakes that previously struck out in the ocean. But since they're not reporting earthquakes, I can't really determine an area beyond here at the Gorda Escarpment and here all the way up at Victoria. Halfway point would put us right here off the coast of Oregon. Okay. Now, Northern California, Eureka, is also going to get it. We already issued the warning for that three days ago, and we're three days in on a seven-day watch. So there's four more days in the warning down here, right where the plate boundary comes into California. Let me show it to you. Here. Do you see where the red line comes into Northern California? We have a warning going right here. And I have the other warnings that I've just now issued up here to the north. All of this should happen in the next several days. Three to four days. So sh we should see some activity significant out in the ocean. We should also see some activity over here on land. Does that make sense? And it should be about the same size. The warning down here to the south is for the exact same size. 5.0. 4.9. 5.0. Could go bigger. Could go bigger. Don't fault me if it does go bigger. Trying to err on the side of caution. I'm basing this on the rest of the earthquakes going around the plate right now. Which around the North Pacific is all fives. Fours and fives. Now looking at California in the last day and a half. Look at this. Two days. Again, it's been three days since my last update. But look along the coast. Even the untrained eye should be able to make out that we have a diagonal line of quakes that starts up here with a big stack, 
goes down across the Bay Area, San Francisco, focuses in and goes down the creeping section of the San Andreas. It's pretty obvious, right? Now, this just had a boatload of rain this past week. And over to the east, a boatload of snow over at the border with Nevada. But all that rain on the San Andreas, right here. And I mean, it was right here east of Monterey Bay, right along the San Andreas. Now a bunch of earthquakes start to break out. This is a well-known phenomenon. Waterway earthquakes spreading out across an area and across San Francisco as well. So let's connect up to the north, though. And I'm not saying these are all caused by water. I'm just saying the number of earthquakes, the, the frequency increase, if you will, on this, the number of earthquakes and going down the San Andreas, it's so obvious right after the rain. But the plate is shifting. Let's go back and look at the red line map here. The plate is shifting up to the north. And what do you think is going to happen down to the south? And like I said, even the untrained eye should be able to see that there's a diagonal line following the San Andreas, quite literally going down here to the south. And then we jump out in the ocean. Do you see that? 1.8 out in the ocean. We jump down to the south of 1.4. We also jump the bigger earthquake over into the valley. I'm going to show you what's at all these locations. Where should we start? I guess we'll start up to the north. Let's go pull the lone earthquake over in Northeast California. Viola. Viola. California. California. How you guys doing out there? Doing good? Good. I can't hear you, but I'm assuming you're saying good. If not, I hope you have a better day. Tomorrow. Or today. Depending on where you are. <laughs> All right, enough technicalities. We're on the side of Mount Lassen. Look at it. Now, this stratovolcano last erupted in about 100 years ago, I'd say. Late 1800s. Early 1900s. But the new earthquake on the flank of the volcano, I mean, it's related to the volcano, wouldn't you say? It's on the side of a stratovolcano. Now, this stack of earthquakes down here is also at a volcano called Clear Lake Volcano, a.k.a. The Geysers. The geysers at Geyserville of California. Let's go search it. Look it up. Take a gander. Let's take a gander. Come on, guys. Let's take a gander. <laughs> There's our earthquake epicenter. And right next to the earthquake epicenter, we have geothermal turbines, pipelines, and drill points. The drill points go down a few hundred to a few thousand feet. And we've drilled in to get that steam. Not we, they. They have drilled in to get the steam next to Geyserville at Clear Lake Volcanic Field. Mount Kanakti at the center there. That's where the big stack is. So, volcano here, volcano here. Line of earthquakes going back out to the Juan de Fuca fracture zone. That's shifting. Line of earthquakes going down through the Bay Area. Wait a second. Where are these centered around? Let's pull the earthquake from right in the middle. You see it says three kilometers east of Berkeley, California. Now we're on the plate boundary, but I think there's something else here. Three kilometers east of Berkeley. Yep. Yep, okay, we're going to back it out and just take a quick look over to the east. There we are. Now... Right through here, if I go pull up the USGS map, this will actually help us a little bit better. Do you see this? It says Mount Diablo State Park. Thousands of earthquakes broke out here at Mount Diablo. And that prompted me to do some serious researching on the area. And I found literature from the 1950s and 60s talking about volcanic tuftage found at the top of the peak of Mount Diablo. They couldn't figure out where it came from. And, uh, of course, a lava flow at the top of a mountain. Now, that came from undersea, back when all this used to be underwater. Apparently, there was an undersea mount here of some kind that rose into the mountains that we have today. But it was an ancient volcano a long, long time ago. And right here, there's the fault now. The Hayward Fault that comes out of the Bay Area. There, right there. There's the Hayward. Okay. So... Earthquakes start there, right next to the volcanic feature from ancient times, and then spreading out all the way around the basin. This is a basin, or 
a depressed area around all the mountains, which are the folded areas, where the plate boundaries are, of course, and all the red lines are. Now, the red lines go down to the south. They meet up in the San Andreas. It's called the creeping section. See, I move my mouse over this. It says San Andreas Fault Zone Creeping Section. That's from the USGS. Creeping section of the San Andreas is creeping. Goes right down to this point, 2.5, jumps over to the valley, 2.4. Jumps down to the south, loses a little steam, 1.8. So this is somewhat abnormal to jump out into the ocean. Normally we jump over into the valley, go down to the southeast tip of the valley. So I'm wondering, what's over here at the 2.4? We're in the middle of the valley. Le Moore, California. We're not on the edge of the valley. We're 30 kilometers down at the bottom below the valley. What the heck? Is there anything even here? Oh, wait. Three hot spots in California. How many are there? The only three hot spots in all of California for the most part, at least as far as there might be one to the north. Look, a cluster of three of them in a triangle shape. Three hotspots, computer filtering out, not knowing what to do. Now, let me show you what's right next to this, why that matters. Right here, over here, oil wells. And I mean tens of thousands of them. Oil and gas wells. But come on, now how many is that? Earthquake next to the hotspots again. This time in California. And we do have a hotspot up here to the north. On the southeast side of Mono Lake. This time out in the desert. In a creek. Where it just snowed. That moved, was up here, miles away. Now a new hotspot has appeared on the southeast side of Mono Lake. This is today. We have three hotspots up next to Walker Lake and here, uh, the old lava flows at Lava Bed State Park. My God, we've got some hotspots popping up at volcanoes, guys. I'm gonna put that in the title of my video. Hotspots at volcanoes. Is it a sign that there could be an eruption? I don't have priors to go on this. Not like this. Let's go down here along the coast. Go see. I know what's right here in between these two earthquakes. In between these two earthquakes. Directly in the middle in this little divot of an area cut out along the coast. There's offshore oil platforms. But I would like to just get the coordinates and see how far we are. Avila Beach. Avila Beach. Paste and search. How far are we? I always look 6 to 10 miles. I think we're further than that. Farther than that. Not further. Ah, love it. Okay, here's the earthquake epicenter. Here are our offshore platforms. Oil and gas again. And right on land, all around Vandenberg Village, let me show you, oil wells. Yeah, hopefully you can see these. Oil and gas wells, for the most part, all the way around the base. And it goes up to the north, and it focuses in up here. I don't know how much further it goes, but you can see them. Well, some of them are grainy, but you can see them still. Uh, it goes up to about here, and then stops with the tanks. So we're right offshore. I'm going to measure just to see. And again, we look 6 to 10 miles. So we're 20 miles offshore. That's far enough away that I would think that it's not related to the pumping operations, which makes me think there's something else here nearby that we just don't know about yet. What if they're doing some kind of offshore exploration out here? I know they authorized more drilling, and we're only a matter of 50 miles from the nearest wells. Again, I look 6 to 10 miles. Interesting. We're jumping around it. Now we're going down to the south, and we're kind of doing the same thing. We're on the southeast side of this bend. Let's go look. 1.4. West, southwest of Isla Vista. So one spot has nothing there, but that, again, that could just be from no flyovers in a long time. Yeah, look, look where we're going. Now we're just within a matter of a few miles from the offshore platform here. Let's get the measurement tool and see. How far are we? Six miles. 5.9 miles. Very interesting. Oh, look at the oil slick in the water there. Look at that. Dude. 
Dude. Dude. Alright. <laughs> ah, California, man. California. Alright. Let's go over along the California-Nevada border and show you something that's similar to what we just got done talking about along the coast. A diagonal line of earthquakes going northwest to southeast, right? You see it along the coast. Now look over along the border. It's like a microcosm. It's a smaller version of the same thing. Going the same direction. And look, Southern California. Look at that. China Lake, Ridgecrest, same thing. And Southern California, far Southern California. Look, Northwest, Southeast. They're all going Northwest to Southeast. The whole plate is shifting Northwest to Southeast. As the Juan de Fuca Fracture Zone. Juan de Fuca. Come on, say it along with me, everybody. One, two, three. Juan de Fuca. The Juan de Fuca Fracture Zone is shifting up here to the north. And down to the south, it's compensating. And the number of earthquakes is picking up down to the south as the number of tremors and vibration is shifting up to the north. Now, I didn't even talk about the earthquakes in Washington. Do I need to? Do you want to? Or should we carry on down into Southern California and look up the earthquakes down there? I guess we could carry on with California and then wrap up with Washington. Let's do that. So diagonal line of earthquakes across Southern California. Pretty simply put, it's the same trajectory that the rest of the plate is shifting. It's going from east of LA and it's clustering out right here. And I'd like to go look up where it's clustering out. Let's go pull a coordinate from right in the middle of the whole mess of earthquakes in East LA. Redlands, California. Redlands. Redlands. Paste and search. Inquiring minds want to know. Is there anything here? Other than the fault zones, which there's plenty of. Moreno Valley, Loma Linda. Grand Terrace. Yucaipa. All the fires. All the fires. Now you got to remember what happened this past year. All this burn. All of it. Fire after fire breaking out right along the fault. Now we're back here. Is there anything of significance down here at the epicenter though? Million dollar mansions. Million dollar mansions. Is there anything else here nearby? A trailer. Manufactured housing right next to the million dollar mansions. Oh, oh, hell no. Oh, oh, hell no. Hell no. Look, extreme high voltage power lines. And I mean right next to it. Here they are. Here are the power lines. Here's the earthquake. Earthquake, power line. Earthquake, power line. And it's a quadruple set again. So it's the only spot for miles around that's got it. But crying out loud, man. My God, man. What does it mean? What does it mean? I can hear somebody at the USGS right now. But Dutch, what does it mean? Rewind, dude. Oh, wait, you can't? You're watching on Twitch? Okay. Piezoelectric, piezoelectric. Discharge magnetism in the crust. Some kind of some kind of electrical discharge that's causing an earthquake. A standing wave spreading through the tank. Maybe it's electrical energy of some kind. Maybe it's acoustic. Maybe it's an acoustic electrical standing wave. Maybe it's a friction of some kind. And it's some kind of electrostatic charge. Friction in the plate, actual electricity generated by just tension. Who knows? Someone should figure it out. All I figured out is that there's hot spots and earthquakes happening next to the power line. And it keeps happening over and over again. And it's not just the power lines. It's the power stations too, like the solar farms, the wind farms, the nuclear power plants, the geothermal turbines, and the coal-fired power plants are the only thing that I'm not finding earthquakes directly at. But I take that back. Because there was the big earthquake over in China last month when we went and looked it up. What was it below? Coal-fired power plant. But it was like 10 kilometers down below. 
Now, what would you do if I told you that we're leaving the spot right where the power lines are that I just looked up in East LA, right here, where these earthquakes are? And we go all the way down to the east southeast and we dead end in two power generation stations down at the border. And I mean right there. Let me go pull the coordinates and show you. Actually, let's get the coordinates from the good old USGS. Ocotillo, 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 Acotillo. However you say it, probably means eight something. But where are we? Like I said, power generation, right? Do you see all these? They look like fields. These are solar fields. These are all solar panels. And they go on for miles and miles. And they're replacing the farming down here, which you see in green, with this. Again, solar panels on for miles and miles and miles. Now, right next to the solar panels that go on for miles, and they really do, look how many they have right down to the border. But we go right across and we have geothermal where they've drilled to get geothermal steam right here. And that's to get the steam from the volcano that's right next to this, which is Sultan Buttes. The Sultan Buttes volcanoes in Southern California. And the earthquakes go, I'm telling you, they go right down to this spot here, right next to the solar farm. Now back up to the north, we go back up to Salton Sea. Do you see how there's like three sets of quakes that go across the U.S. side of the border and dead end into the lake, basically? Well, if you dead end into the lake, look what's there. Right here, more electrical generating turbines. So the earthquakes are accompanying right next to these power stations. The power stations, you can't say they're all on fault. I mean, some are, yes, like this one here that we just looked at down in Southern California. But what about the rest of the country where it's happening, where it's not on fault directly? So the diagonal line of quakes in between the two is a slow slip. This right here is equivalent to, let's get the tremor map turned back on, this up here to the north. So wait a second. This down to the south is equal to this up to the north. How do I know that? Five years ago, professionals down at University of Southern California announced that the whole San Jacinto Fault from LA all the way down to the border is slow slipping. In a slow slip, an episodic tremor slip happens here from time to time, and it carries on. Here's Southern California, and the spot the professional said was slipping is the San Jacinto. Going down to the south, where all these earthquakes are right now at Anza Gap. So going across here, though, this is all slow slipping for five years, and professionals said someday it's going to lead to a large earthquake. Well, right now, the largest of the bunch is a 3.7, so it'll have to be way bigger than that. But going back up across, it's a diagonal line. Look where the diagonal line really goes to. The diagonal line points back up to this 1.1, 1 .1, 1.4, to this area. And this area, where the 1.1 and 1.4 are, connects back in to this, the Garlock Fault, that goes the opposite way than all the other faults in the whole area, the whole region even. So we have a line of quakes that comes back up here and goes to here. Then we have a line of quakes that goes back up from here to here. So let's trace it back. We go back up Ridgecrest. We go back up to the super volcano at the border. There's a super volcano right here where this stack of earthquakes is. And down here, there's a volcanic field and power generation stations at both. Let me prove it to you in case you're a denier or you don't know or you're somebody who's just new here. Some professional doesn't believe there's volcanoes at all. Surely the USGS would tell us if there's earthquakes happening at all these volcanoes, it would be alarming. It could mean something. Yeah, they don't want to tell you because you will get alarmed. So they leave it up to me. Let me take the heat. That's okay. No pun intended. I'm finding the hot spots. I'm finding all this stuff, guys. And you just got to look it up and go look it up yourself. You'll start finding it and you'll see that if the USGS doesn't tell you, you try and tell them, you find out they'll freak out on you for telling. Now look where the earthquake epicenter is. Look what's right across the road. Geothermal power generating turbines. Powered by steam. Because they drilled into 
this supervolcano called Long Valley Caldera, with a thousand cubic kilometers of melt down below. It also just got 10 or 15 feet of snow in the past few days, right across here. But that's where the line of earthquake starts, and then you see it makes a line. And again, that diagonal line, northwest to southeast, goes right down into here, the tip of the valley. So, let's go pull the earthquake at the tip of the valley. 1.6, West Bishop. What valley? See these thin red lines that go all the way down? Okay, that's the line of earthquakes. That's where it starts. And that thin red line goes right down into here. So let's trace it out. Where does it start? Super volcano, yes, I just showed it to you. Goes out of the super volcano and goes right to here. Bishop. Look what's on the other side of the mountain. Crater Mountain. One side of the mountain, nothing. Other side of the mountain, Crater Mountain. And the big pine volcanic field made up of several spatter cones that go all the way down and around here. Now, they also go back into the mountain. Look. You see they're covered partially by the mountain? So, it goes up to the north slightly, and they're weathered away over time. They go up into the mountains here and stop. And that's where the earthquake is on the other side. They're all tied to the supervolcano, though. That's where it starts. Starts at the supervolcano, goes down to this 1.6 that I just showed you next to West Bishop. Then we have a big open area, and we get down to another 1.6. So wait a second. It's like a 1.6 and a 1.6. These are right on top of each other, so clicking them is going to be kind of hard. There we go. So let's show you where we start again. It's the same size activity, and it's going down across into another volcanic field. Look, behold, a picture speaks a thousand words. Evaporation ponds in the deserts of Death Valley, basically. Lee's Flats, Kozo Volcanic Field. And you're welcome to read it, but I'd just like to show you what starts here. More geothermal turbines at Devil's Kitchen Geothermal Pumping Operation. Their name, guys, not mine. They gave it that name. The earthquakes coming in here next to Lee's Flats, which is the closest volcano, obviously. Pretty interesting, isn't it? So recapping, all of California. We started a volcano up in North California, Clear Lake Volcanic Field, where they're generating electricity. Here. We jump across over to... Not Mount Shasta. Long... No, wait. Did we look this one up? I'm having a mind fart here. Did we look this one up at Viola? I think we did. Mount Lassen? I don't know. I've looked up too many tonight. Let's put it in. I just got to make sure. I got. Yeah, no, we did. We did. Viola, Mount Lassen. It's got to be. It's not Mount Shasta. Yeah, there. Mount Lassen. Yes. Okay. So, Mount Lassen. Let's start over. Sorry. <laughs> Real professional. Hey, the weatherman gets on. He's like... Yeah, like, screw it, man. Let's start over. We'll do it live. Freaking thing sucks. All right. So, this stack of earthquakes here at Clear Lake. Then we jump... I know, I know. It's funny, guys. We jump over across the valley, and we go up here to Mount Lassen. We go down to the south. We're at Mount Diablo. We go then along the creeping section of the San Andreas right down to Stop, where we jump over to the valley, and we've got hot spots in the middle of the valley. Then we jump around the San Andreas. We go offshore here. We're 20 miles from a pumping operation at a spot that doesn't show anything there. Not nothing. And then down to the south, we're right next to another pumping operation. Over to the east, super volcano right along the border. Diagonal line of quakes going down to Kozo Volcanic Field that then makes a diagonal line of quakes going down into the Mojave Desert. And that's where we dead end down here at the south tip of the valley into this volcano peak and all its lava flows and that's a good way to sum it up so volcano after volcano after volcano after volcano drill point after drill point after drill point after drill point and then a spread of quakes going across the craton edge and power lines working their way back into the earthquake mix and i say back into because we saw this happen previously a few months ago so now the earthquakes are popping off back at the power lines 
Overall, we're looking for a large earthquake to come in into South America, Central America, South America border region, right between Panama, Colombia. Up to the north, we look for a magnitude less. So if it's going to be six-ish coming in right here, 5.96, that still means fives are going to come into Mexico. Fives are going to come into the Gulf of California. Up to the north, we're expecting fives. So it's going to be fives across the east of the plate. And then in South America, I think it's going to be big. I really do. And the rest of the planet is going just into overdrive with all the deep earthquakes. The number of deep earthquakes spread all the way over to Europe. Even Africa's in on it now. We've got Africa going, the equatorial region going across French Guinea, over in South America, and again over into Guyana, over into Africa. It's just so rare to see that. We had multiple 7.0s this past week. Two plus upper sixes, and really those were like sevens as well. So, I mean, we're really dealing with multiple upper sixes and sevens. That's nothing to scoff at. It's nothing to dismiss. It means seismic unrest just took place and is continuing to take place as long as we see these new deep earthquakes hammer off like we're seeing here on the screen right now in the past two days. The only good news I have right now is that we only have, what, two significant deep earthquakes on the screen right now. So it could be that the deep earthquakes are going to start to lighten up, in which case the earthquakes will back off but if we get any more new deep earthquakes, it's going to go up, not down. Okay? Now, speaking of all that, do you have an earthquake plan? Croatia, do you have an earthquake plan? New 5.0 is coming into Croatia in the next few days. Are you ready for it? You should have an emergency kit. You should know what to do when an earthquake strikes. I mean, that's kind of a no-brainer, isn't it? To know what to do when an earthquake strikes, take shelter underneath a table or a desk basic. You should also have a change of clothes and a set of shoes by the side of your bed. In case an earthquake hits in the middle of the night and you don't have power, you're probably going to want to slip on some shoes or slippers or something. Just a basic thing like that could even make a big difference for you. But an emergency kit. The emergency kit is supposed to have first aid, sanitation, food and water for a few days. The change of clothes, set of shoes, socks, all that good stuff. Also, remember, you should probably think about the other people in your household. If you have children, think of them. Disabled and elderly, also think of them. I'm just reminding you, you will actually do a much better job of coming up with ideas than what I'm throwing out right now. But I encourage you to do it. Please, will you please do it? Will you finally just do it? Take the stuff that you have in your house that you're supposed to have and put it into a bag. Also, go get an extra copy of your keys made, finally. Do it. Go to the store, whatever you got to do. You know, the hardware store, wherever they copy keys. Get your extra sets of keys. Put them into the emergency kit. You'll thank me later when you have an extra set of keys that you know where it is. You'll be like, oh yeah, I've got a set of keys in my emergency kit. In case you ever lose your keys. But in all other instances, you don't have to fumble around in those few extra seconds or minutes that you might be going to grab your emergency kit. Okay? I'll be back if anything else goes down. And remember, somebody in chat just said it. It was scrolling by. It's a very important motto to remember. And it's just something that is kind of cheesy, but it sticks. Which is, don't be scared. Be prepared. And it's not too cheesy because it really means something. That if you're prepared for something, it's kind of like a, a fireman or a, a soldier or somebody, that they go through training. Yes, it's still an alarming experience what you're going to go through, but at least you have that training. You are prepared. It takes some of the edge of the fear off and replaces it with vigilance. And that's what I want you to be like on earthquakes, okay? You don't live in fear. You live vigilant and ready, and you watch which way the pressure is going. And that's what the arrows are on the map here for, to show you which way we expect things to flow. So when you see the West Pacific getting hit with deep earthquakes, and then a spread of five spreads out and away, and they follow the arrows, or when you see a 6.7 to 6.9 coming across, and you know South America is going to light up in the next few days, you know these are connected more like 
sheets of ice on a lake. One goes, the others go. Big one moves, the smaller ones around it move. You can see a transfer all the way across if a right push is taking place. So I want you to think of it like that. Don't be scared, be prepared, and I will be back. If anything else goes down. It's getting late. It's 11.59 p.m. Central Time on the 3rd of February, 2021. But let's just say it is the 4th. It is February 4th. We already made it through January. Let's just hope this whole year either speeds through the way it's going right now or something good happens that makes it all that much the better. You guys be safe. Peace out. Word up. Much love. I'll be back.